Oh my god. Look at all these eggs! I'm a cobra farmer! Give me that egg instead! Look at that. Like a dinosaur. I've been waiting for this for a while. I thought this was gonna happen last year and it didn't happen, but ooh, it's finally happening. Look at this. What do you guys see here? We got a bunch of white eggs. Big Bertha, the monocled cobra, laid eggs within the last couple hours. She literally had no eggs in here this morning when I turned on the lights. Come back a couple hours later to get some stuff cleaned up and bam, we got some baby cobras. Look at those white eggs. I'm so excited. I thought, this is not about you, Pepe. This is about Big Bertha, please. So we're gonna see what's going on in here. Hopefully she's laid all of her eggs and we can safely get them out. Just by looking at them right now, they look fertile, they look good to go. Oh my God. That's a lot of eggs. She kind of still looks thick. She might actually lay some more eggs. Look, look at the, how the scales are spread apart right there. Guys, since this morning those eggs weren't there, and she seems to have eggs still inside her. We're gonna leave her alone for a little bit longer and come back to collect the eggs, but look how many eggs she's sitting on top of. There might be more than 15. Oh my God. Oh my God. Comment below what you think, Big Bertha Lee. That is so cool. Monocled Cobra, drop for drop, more venomous than a King Cobra. A true Cobra, famous throughout Asia. We're just gonna leave her alone. Love that snake. It's actually the first ever Cobra I worked with growing up. I was lucky enough to meet this snake, and now I own her. Now she's having babies here at CWW. CWW! All right, beautiful people, we're gonna leave this locked and secured. We're gonna do this last, because we wanna make sure she gets all of those eggs out. Comment below what you think she's gonna lay. How many? 12, 20, 112? What do you think? So we're cleaning up all the cages while we're waiting for that cobra to finish laying eggs. We got all the gaboon vipers right here. We got the big female that belongs to Tyler. I believe it's this one right here. Excuse me. Excuse me. I gotta be super gentle with these snakes because my male has been mating like crazy with this female gaboon that Tyler owns and also my female that's in there as well. So we might have baby gaboon vipers as well, which don't lay eggs. They actually drop live birth, which is really cool. They just come out in clear sacks, ready to go. So this lucky boy right here, he's just been going at it with all these ladies. So we'll see what happens. Maybe some baby gaboon vipers down the road. These guys have the world's longest fangs of any venomous reptile and the biggest venom yield of any venomous reptile. So they can just dump so much venom in one bite that's super, super deadly. And these guys have what's called a cardiotoxin, so it's the venom that attacks your heart. Now all these crazy things like the fast strikers, they have big fangs, gnarly venom. At the end of the day, it's just used to eat the rats in the wild where they live in Africa. These snakes want nothing to do with people and they actually stay still and wait in ambush upwards to months just waiting for a rat to go by to eat it. They're not in search of hurting anyone, just trying to get a meal. And this is Rhinosaurus, so they have almost like little rhino horns on the tip of their snout. How cool is that? Secure. Woo, everything in the snake room is clean, just cleaned every single enclosure. Big Bertha is just now finishing up with her eggs, so I'm gonna collect those in the morning. And Kevin just came out, look at this, we got Kevin hanging out, he is a beast of a King Cobra. You guys can come here on a tour very soon. Book a tour on ChallengeWildlife.com in the middle of this year and you can see this big King Cobra up close and personal with him right in front of your face with this class. How cool is that? This is a dream. I've wanted to do this my whole life. Follow your dreams. Anything can be possible if you put determination and your passion into it. Everywhere you look, there's a lizard friend and a kaboom viper. Everywhere you look, there's a beautiful scale to see. What a beautiful place to be. Wow! Chillers, wow! It is the very next day, and as you can see, I'm wearing the same clothes because I just wanted to stay original and, 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 and make sure the snake recognizes me. Now, what we're gonna do is just take Big Bertha out. As you can see, she is basically deflated. Look at her. She is so skinny all around completely deflated after dropping all those eggs. So we'll get her a meal as soon as we can. But for now, we can gently take her out. Ooh. And like I said before, I, I've known the snake for a very long time. That's why I take the liberty of free handling her and whatnot. I've worked with snakes my whole life. Look how skinny she is. This is a huge monocled cobra, but she is so skinny from dropping all those eggs. Look at that, how crazy. Her spine is showing, her last bit of her tail is super skinny. So we're gonna have to get her back on feed, make sure she gets nice and thick. As you can see, she's just, she's tired. She's not hissing as much as she usually does. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. 
now we can start collecting those eggs. We got vermiculite right here. So this is great for reptile eggs. Put some water in here, make sure it's not too wet, not too dry. That's gonna hold the perfect humidity for these little reptile eggs. Come close to this. I have not looked at this clutch of eggs since she Oh my God. Though every single one of those eggs, except for maybe one, honestly, that one looks fine too. They all look great. That's awesome, look at all these eggs. I'm a cobra farmer. Give me that egg exam. Anyways, let's, uh, let's start collecting these eggs. We gotta be real careful because it's now been almost 24 hours and the big thing with reptile eggs is that you don't want to turn the reptile eggs over once they're laid because what happens is there there's an air bubble right at the top of the shell and the embryo is being given oxygen by that little bubble and if you turn it you can drown the embryo so we're just gonna make little divots just like that with my thumb make a bunch of little divots for the eggs so they stay nice and in place and we have so many eggs i gotta make a lot of divots let's start putting these eggs let's see Ooh, look at this that is so cool, they are perfect. I'll candle them later to make sure they're good. Oh my God, this is so cool. This is my first ever time producing my own Cobras. I've worked at other facilities and hatched out Cobras, collected eggs, do all that stuff, but I've never had my own Cobras lay eggs. This is so cool, this is a big milestone in my wall my career. This is so cool, look at this. We got one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 Cobra eggs. We almost got 30 Cobra eggs out of Big Bertha's first clutch. That's insane. Usually a first clutch could be like 10 eggs, 12 eggs. Holy crap, she had 26 eggs. That's insane. And you guys are probably wondering, what am I gonna do with these eggs? What am I gonna do with these eggs once they hatch? Well. The thing with my facility is it's for education, conservation. And the big thing is these animals don't need any conservation work for their species. They're not endangered. They're found throughout the land of Asia. They're doing pretty good. Their venom is very valuable for venom research and anti-venom. So we're just gonna donate most of these babies to a venom lab so they can keep producing anti-venom and save people's lives and continue research. So check this out. These eggs right here in this pile, when they first come out, a lot of reptile eggs have a slime on them and then they'll stick together. So they don't get shuffled around and they don't lose their oxygen. So some of these eggs are kind of stuck. And I gotta be careful because I wanna make sure I don't, I don't turn these guys. Ooh, it's really stuck to the, here we have a problem. It's really stuck to the bottom of this cage. This is why I have an egg laying box. So they wouldn't be on that surface, but uh, she didn't want to use the egg laying box. She felt more comfortable in the hide. Let's see, how are we gonna do this? This one's kind of loose, this one. There we go, there's a loose one right there. I can't believe she had 26 eggs. That is so crazy. Oh, God, be so careful. Oh, this is the most stressful thing I've ever done. The, the eggs are so glued up to the bottom of the cage. I'm trying so hard not to rip these eggs. So far we're good, but I've wet the eggs a little bit, trying to get them unglued. But I'm telling you this natural ooze that goes over the eggs to help keep them in the same spot to protect those little oxygen bubbles inside. They do the job. Oh, I might, look at this, I actually got a bunch of the eggs right now. This might work. Oh, I gotta be so careful. I do not wanna break these eggs. Ah. Oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming, oh, gotta be so careful. Oh, oh my God, that is so cool. This is the only egg that's like half slug, but honestly, you never know. Sometimes those eggs will hatch. So let me just, whoo. Let me organize a little bit better in here. This is so, this is like brain surgery. This is so intense for me. <laughs> I don't want to mess up any of her babies. I love this cobra to death. There we go. Right there in that corner, we still have a couple more to pull out. Let's see how we can do this. This is like the warm up before we start breeding king cobras and black mambas, you know? So now in the future, I'm gonna now put some wax paper, or put something on the bottom of the cage so there's no way that these eggs get glued to the bottom of the vision cage ever again. Oh. All right, they're still in the same position. Woo. Just gotta move them. Dude, this is a lot of eggs. I was not expecting this many cobra eggs from one cobra, especially a first time mom. I'm sweating bolts real hard right now. Uh. And this room, for incubation purposes, this room is actually the perfect temperature for cobra eggs from high 70s to to mid 80s. So basically, we can let them self incubate in this snake room because it's temperature controlled, but I do have an incubator coming. Guys, look at this. 
Look at all these eggs. I, I'll try and consolidate these guys better when I get them into the bigger incubator. But that's 26 cobra eggs. First time ever producing cobras. My first ever cobra I got a handle when I was real young at the beginning of my career. Full circle, how cool is that? So these are venomous reptiles. They are gonna stay in the snake room even though they're just eggs. It says Jan 30th, 2023. That's when the eggs were laid. So we know exactly what time the incubation process started. We're gonna get our labeler. We're gonna move everything over to this side of the room where we got our baby snakes. That was probably the most intense moment in my reptile career right there. That was wild. So let's get Big Bertha back inside her enclosure. She is just so deflated. It's so crazy how skinny she is right now. She's got a little bit of energy. You can see she's hissing. What's up, mama? Nice and easy. I want to be nice and gentle with her. Like I said, I've known this snake for a very long time. She's just so skinny right now. Look at her. So we'll get a meal in her as soon as possible. But she needs to rest. That was a lot of energy she just lost. Right in there. Good to go. Put a lock on that. Nice and secure. Let's take care of somebody who uh, I've known for a long time, but uh, she's not as uh, sweet as Big Bertha. This is Justina, the female King Cobra. She needs fresh water and she needs a cleaning. Justina's, holy, she's very intense when it comes to defending her enclosure. Okay, relax, relax, nice and easy. She is a huge female King Cobra. Relax, nice and easy, don't go too crazy, baby. Holy. Nice and easy, nice and easy. So we have our snake oil receptacle right here. Okay, okay. You're really cranky today. Relax, relax. You hear she's growling right now. Whee! King Cobras have a modified trachea which allows them to growl, which makes them such an intense snake. But uh, she's just letting me know she doesn't want to get messed with. So let's clean her enclosure. Nice and easy, mama. Nice and easy. There we go. And in the wild, a king cobra like this would actually eat monocled cobras for breakfast. Nice and easy, nice and easy. There we go. So here, I'm gonna clean this enclosure and I'll see you guys in a split. <laughs> ah, okay. Ah! All right, nice and clean enclosure. Let's take out my sweet, sweet girl, Justina, the female king cobra. She, she's pretty cranky today. She, she did a lot of lunging. Nice and easy, mama. There we go, nice and easy. And one wrong move, or misreading the body language of King Cobra, you're gonna get bit. So I'm very focused when I do this. I know I make it look easy, but there's a decade of experience behind what I'm doing and focus. Look at that. You can see the, the sheets holding her fangs inside her mouth. She's such a beast of a King Cobra. I love King Cobra, my favorite snake on the planet. All right, come on, Justina. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Right back home. And she's gonna get a big enclosure too, like my big King Cobra, Kevin. It's just gonna take some time. Oh, wait, don't do it. Don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. Go home, go home, go home. Oi, oi, you hear her growling right now? She is so intense. Go. Come on. Back inside. Oi. You're making things very difficult. Can you let me put you back inside, please, Mama? She hoods up so tall. She is such a mighty king cobra. Yeah. Ooh, she's on fire today. I'm sorry, mama. I'm sorry. Woo! Everything's intense today. Locked and secure. Good to go. All right. So yesterday we got all the cleaning done. Just got to take care of some Tyler Nolan snakes. Got more cleaning supplies. Uh, Kevin has not eaten in the past month. I believe we are going into King Cobra mating season. So when that happens, they kind of get a little, a little lost track of focus and you might be smelling pheromones off of Justina. So we'll see if we can offer him a meal. We got a nice big python. These snakes are actually invasive in the Everglades and they pose a threat to our ecosystem. So they get humanely put down. So to be very resourceful, we use the whole python as food for the King Cobra because naturally a King Cobra eats Burmese pythons in the wilds of Asia. So it's a win. For anyone who keeps seeing covers in Florida, Kevin, you hungry? 
Kevin? What's going on, big boy? Kevin? What's your food? You might be hungry. He seemed interested the other day when the other king cobras were feeding. Go on. Go on. He's a beast of a king cobra. Um, but we're not going to mess with him too much. I just want to get him enticed to go after the python, and then we're going to actually leave him alone. We want to make sure he eats this meal since he's missed a couple meals. But reptiles like king cobras can go months without food, so it's not a huge stressor. We just want to make sure our boy's good. Come on. Come on. Oh, there we go. Nice chew. Look at that. Like a dinosaur. He's like, what? What's going on? It's got dirt on it. All right. Let me get some water. Rinse this off a little bit. Make sure it's not too dirty for my boy. There we go. We're going to leave it right here on the leaves so it's not too dirty. There you go, buddy. Look, it's right here. There you go. All right, we're going to leave Kevin alone. I think that's going to be it for this episode. I'll need his food. I love you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful. Stay safe. Most of all, follow your dreams. Stay passionate about what you guys love. I love working with wildlife. I love building up this wildlife park. It's my passion. It just shows you if you love something like just go for it. And you can do it. All right, I love you, Kevin. I'll see you guys on the next one. Look at all these eggs! I'm a cover farmer! Give me that egg exam!